to me, I think the impact of Bitcoin on the world economy is very similar to, you know, the impact of, say, the Industrial Revolution of the late, um, you know, the post-Civil War kind of era in America. You know, it, it's going to be enormous. And I think we will, it will get adopted and it, it, it doesn't need, uh, it really doesn't need, it doesn't need to, it's not a payment system. You know, it's just like, you just got to believe, you got to understand that it's not a payment system. What matters is we've got a new form of money that is going to be, that is being deployed worldwide. That's 15 years old and it's one, one trillion dollars in value right now. And you do not want to miss this thing. Bitcoin maximalist and mathematician Fred Krueger believes that Bitcoin is much bigger than a payment system. It's a new kind of money for the entire world. Despite being only 15 years old, Bitcoin has already reached a market value of $1 trillion. For Kruger, the key takeaway is not to miss out on this financial innovation, rather than worrying about its competition with other platforms like Facebook or Solana. Kruger believes Bitcoin will have an enormous impact worldwide as it continues to be adopted. The increasing interest from financial institutions indicates that this future is becoming more likely. An article on Cointelegraph states that on July 8th, US-listed spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds experienced their largest daily net inflows in over a month, totaling $295 million. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust ETF led with $187.2 million followed by Fidelity's Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund with $61.5 million. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust also saw $25.1 million in inflows. The surge in inflows comes amid concerns over massive Bitcoin sales by the German government and upcoming repayments from the collapsed Mt. Gox exchange. Despite these market worries, some analysts believe the fears may be exaggerated. That said, let's look at some clips from Fred Krueger's video update. Please take a moment to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks and enjoy the video. This is a really important graph, right? I think this, this is one of Giovanni's best ways of debunking the kind of supply um, model. You know, everybody thinks that supply, it's all about supply. It's not about supply, right? And, you know, you really, you know, Giovanni just points it out perfectly here where he says, look, let's just take available supply you know, this con we'll just call it available supply, which is a sort of total supply minus, you know, illiquid supply, right? That's sort of your, this is sort of your, the supply that's moved around a lot. Well, relatively recently, let's say within a year. Uh, and let's look at price relative to relative supply. Well, there's no correlation, right? It's just random, right? So it, clearly these things are not, one determines the other. And I think, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's not to say supply scarcity doesn't matter. What he's trying to say is that the available supply is not a mathematical driver of Bitcoin price. It's just not. Um, I, I think by saying scarcity doesn't matter, he's actually infuriated a lot of people. Um, yeah. Ken. Okay. This is good. Our new addresses an indication of adoption or is a six. Look, I think it is. And it really is an indication of adoption. Let me just stop the sharing. Why do I think it, it is uh, an indication of adoption? Well, if, if you told me just new ad addresses with dust in them, I would say absolutely not. Right. Because, you know, I create these new addresses every, all the time. Right. Um, and I'm pretty active on Bitcoin. I, I actually use it quite a bit um, for a bunch of things. But let, let's, let's just say, I rarely, every single day I'm doing some kind of Bitcoin transaction or multiple ones. And I'm creating a lot of new addresses all the time. But what I'm not doing is creating a lot of new addresses with one Bitcoin in them, right? And so you see this pattern of uh, new addresses with one Bitcoin in them, new addresses with $1,000 in them, new addresses with 0 0.1 Bitcoin in them, uh, new addresses with uh, 10 Bitcoin in them. All of these things are uh, growing up and to a, the right with a power law. So yeah, so I do think that these, I think addresses are 
uh, a good proxy for um, user growth. I don't think it's the total. Yeah, so Tom Young completely agrees. Supply has been static for the most part because mining is a small. So that's one of the things I put in that document too, which is let's look at mining right now. Mining at this point in all of 2025, you're going to have 0.78% of the supply of Bitcoin that's going to be mined. It's not significant. It's 1% of Bitcoin supply is going to be mined. The Mt. Gox, so 1% of Bitcoin supply is 210,000 coins, right? So is uh, Mt. Gox supply 210,000 coins? Not quite. You know, it's 140,000 coins. But my point is Mt. Gox, the Mt. Gox supply, right, which you could sort of argue is coming onto the market, right, is about three quarters of a year or two thirds of a year of, of next year. That's how big it is, right? So neither of these things is that important. The Mt. Gox nor the entire supply that's going to be mined in 2024, 20, 2025. It doesn't matter. Uh, these are these are not significant. You know, we could get more people like Michael Dell who want to come in and, and start buying. I don't think that these things are that important anymore. Now, they were very important back in you know, the halving of 2012, right? That was a pretty big halving, um, but not so much anymore. I don't think supply makes much of a difference. Kruger agrees with Giovanni's conclusion that while scarcity matters, the available supply is not a direct mathematical driver of Bitcoin's price. Regarding Bitcoin mining and its impact on supply, Kruger argues that mining now minimally affects overall supply. He explains that in 2025, only 0.78% of Bitcoin's total supply will be mined, which he considers insignificant. Similarly, he views the release of Bitcoin from Mt. Gox, amounting to about 140,000 coins, as inconsequential compared to the annual mining output. Kruger concludes that neither mining nor the Mt. Gox release significantly affects Bitcoin's market dynamics today, unlike the substantial impact mining had in earlier years, such as during the 2012 halving. Now, let's get back to what Fred Krueger has to say. To me, I think the impact of Bitcoin on the world economy is very similar to, you know, the impact of, say, the Industrial Revolution of the late, um, you know, the post-Civil War kind of era in America. I just think it's going to be enormous. And I think we will, it will get adopted and it doesn't need to, it's not a payment system. You know, it's just like, you just got to believe, you got to understand that it's not a payment system. And, um, and once you understand that it's not a payment system, you stop freaking out about, you know, you know, whether it's going to compete with Facebook or Ton or Solana or anything like that. Those, those don't matter. Essentially, they don't matter, right? What matters is we've got a new form of money. That is going to be that is being deployed worldwide. That's 15 years old and it's one one trillion dollars value right now. And you do not want to miss this thing. It's sort of and by the way, it's really interesting in this Andrew Mellon period. There was there was like crises and panics all the time. You know, there was there's the big bank panic of 1907, but there was you know there was a big one in the 1890s. I think it was 1893 or something. It was just like. Everybody in every bank in Pittsburgh went bust except for Andrew Mellon's bank. Uh, so there was huge volatility and booms and busts a hundred years ago, just like there are today. They're the Sam Bankman Freeds of the late 19th century, early early 20th century. You know, the, the, these guys were out there in, in, in space. And it's really interesting. You know, Andrew Mellon became Secretary of the Treasury uh, during the 20s. And a lot of the prosperity that America enjoyed in the 1920s is really because of Andrew Mellon, because he he kept interest rates low, he uh, cut the debt dramatically. It's possible for a country like the U.S. to really get its act together and, and do very well. So I wouldn't be too bearish on like, you know, the U.S. is going to go. The U.S. can change. You don't want to do your own custody of Bitcoin. I don't think that makes sense. You can own the ETF just like anybody else. And since you own 6%, Kuwait owns 6% of BlackRock, you know, they should buy a very significant position in BlackRock's best new product, IBIT. You have any uh, poll in anybody who knows the sovereign wealth fund people, 
I really, I think that Kuwait should absolutely, if they're not already doing it, they should absolutely start. Is Wall Street laughing at Bitcoin or they're taking more seriously? I just don't think they're really taking it that seriously, is my opinion. And, you know, I'm supposed to have a debate with Jim Bianco tomorrow. You know, he's a, he's a very old Wall Streeters, about the same vintage as me, but he kind of kept, kept doing it. You know, I got out and started building companies and stuff. I think we probably started about the same time. But, but yeah, I you know, I think they're just sort of hedging their bets. They're buying a little bit of it. Wall Street to me is a very productized thing right now that, you know, I just had dinner with a, a former French uh, Wall Streeter, uh, you know, kind of climbed the uh, the French pyramid at Credit Lyonnais. And, uh, you know, he it's like product. It becomes productized. So they do. A fund, B fund, right? You do the Bitcoin fund, you do the ETH fund, you do the Solana, but you don't care, right? They're just in the business of kind of packaging dog food and selling it to the dogs. They don't really have a view. You know, the day is a real swashbuckler pirate, you know, ARB traders is kind of gone as far as I could see. I will check out Michael Howell, former research director of Solomon Brothers. I got to check him out. I, I don't know the name. Global liquidity. Yeah, I mean, look, global liquidity is definitely a thing. And I think, you know, it's very interesting that we are at, in terms of rate cuts, right? I saw that I posted this, uh, retweeted it. We're at the absolute low of the rate cut cycle, and we are about to go into rate cuts in the next 12 months. It's clear as night and day to me. It's the Fed's going to cut, the ECB is going to cut, China is pumping, everybody's going to be supplying liquidity. And so I think liquidity is a driver and I'm I'm a big believer in that. And I, I definitely think, you know, I, I definitely think it'll be, it'll be very positive, especially in the context of a new president. So I think I could be completely wrong, but I think Trump's going to make it in. And I think we're going to have rate cuts. So that's kind of my general view. Fred Krueger argues that individual custody of Bitcoin might not be practical for everyone. Investing in Bitcoin ETFs, such as the iShares Bitcoin Trust from BlackRock, would be a better option. He states that Kuwait, which owns 6% of BlackRock, should consider taking a significant position in this new product and leverage its stake for greater potential returns. Kruger also notes the importance of global liquidity and predicts that major central banks, including the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank, will cut interest rates within the next year. He believes this increase in liquidity will positively impact the economy, especially with the potential of a new presidential administration in the United States. Kruger thinks Donald Trump will win the next presidential election, and he expects that this outcome, combined with rate cuts, will drive economic growth. Now, guys, if you're watching this video, you're interested in crypto. If you want to stay up to date on crypto and Bitcoin, subscribe to my daily five-minute crypto newsletter. It gives the latest expert predictions, any breaking news, and top on-chain analysis all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description to join over 60,000 others and become a better crypto investor. Anyway, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope it brought you some value. I'll see you all in the next one. And as always, all the best.